Hello, my name is Micah Mobley. I am the senior pastor at the First Church of God here in Hoopston, Illinois. And today I'm going to be reading Brothers at Bat, the true story of an amazing all-brother baseball team written by Audrey Vernick. When winter's chill melts into spring, back doors swing open and slap shut as kids just home from school run outside, mitts, bats, and balls in hand. In one New Jersey town near the ocean, back in the 1920s and 30s, you could hear the same door slam over and over. Three brothers raced out, out went three more, and more, and still more. It sounds like a fairy tale, 12 baseball playing brothers, but Anthony, Joe, Paul, Alfred, Charlie, Jimmy, Bobby, Billy, Freddie, Eddie, Bubby, and Louie Ashura were real. They had four sisters too, Catherine, Florence, Rosina, and Francis, and a white dog named Pitch. The sisters didn't play ball. Back then, most people thought sports were just for boys. The Aceras had so many kids that they slept two to a bed and set three across in their outdoor bathroom. They ate dinner wherever they could find a seat. Even on a baseball field, there were more boys than positions, but that didn't stop them from playing. Baseball set the rhythm of their lives. Every spring, Freddie said, you would take your glove out, go in the yard, and play. Neighbors couldn't recall a time where there weren't Acera boys outside tossing the ball, hitting it hard, racing around, with the young ones watching, wishing they were old enough to play. Their high school baseball team had an Acera on it 22 years in a row. In 1938, the brothers ranged in age from 7 to 32. The oldest nine formed their own semi-pro team and competed against other New Jersey teams. Their father coached them and never missed a game. Their uniforms all said the same thing, Aceras. The infields they played on were dirt. Outfields were littered with rocks and sand. The brothers loved to talk about the day they played at the old dog track, an oceanfront stadium that had once been an auto raceway. It was there that Anthony, the oldest, hit a couple of home runs right into the Atlantic Ocean. They called Anthony Poser because of the way he'd stand at the plate as if his baseball card photo were being taken. Charlie, the fifth oldest, was the slowest brother. He was a good player, but a terrible runner. The brothers often joke about the time he hit a ball nearly out of the park, but only made it to second. Jimmy, the sixth brother, had a knuckleball people still talk about. You couldn't hit it, Eddie said. You couldn't catch it either. That ball danced in the air. Jimmy was a great hitter too, probably the best player on the team. But there were no jealousy, there was no rivalry, there was no fighting. As the younger brothers grew up, the older ones shared playing time. If someone dropped a fly ball or struck out, no one screamed or threw down his glove or stomped off the field. We stuck together, Freddie said. The team played around New Jersey, in New York, Connecticut, wherever they could find a good game. Paul sent out letters looking for new teams to play. The All Brothers team always drew big crowds. In 1939 at the New York World's Fair, the Aceras were honored as the biggest family in New Jersey. They were taken to the Newark airport where they boarded a plane and were flown over the fairgrounds. They couldn't believe it. No one they knew had ever been on a plane before. Most of the people at the World's Fair looking up at that small plane in the sky had no idea there was a whole team of brothers aboard. But it wasn't all fun and games and sunny skies. Their darkest day occurred on the field too. Freddie was on third in a scoreless game. Alfred was at the plate. He touched his shoulder, the signal that he was going to bunt. Then things went wrong. The pitch came in high, and somehow the ball bounced off the bat and hit Alfred hard right in the face. They rushed him to the doctor, but he lost an eye. For the next few months, Eddie took Alfred's place as catcher. Everyone thought Alfred's baseball days were over. But when you have 11 brothers willing to throw you balls in the yard, gently at first, then a bit harder, you get your skills back. You get your courage back, too. Alfred was soon wearing the Aceras uniform again. He was a pretty good catcher for a guy with one eye, Freddie said. In the 1940s, something pulled the brothers' attention away from baseball. American soldiers were fighting in the Second World War across the Atlantic. That same huge ocean poster had hit baseballs into. Battles were raging and soldiers were dying, but the brothers knew it was important to fight for their country. The team disbanded as six of Sarah brothers joined the service. Poser was the first to go. He, Charlie, Eddie, and Bobby all served in the Army. After Billy joined the Marines, Freddie did too. Those six brothers traveled far from home. After a lifetime of talking and playing together every day, they now went months, years without seeing one another. They longed for the salty stew smell of the Atlantic Ocean. They dreamed of their childhood home, of the back door slap, slap, slapping as they ran outside to play, and of long afternoons throwing a ball in high soaring arcs from glove to glove to glove in a field full of brothers. Back in New Jersey, their parents and siblings waited for news. It took a long time for letters to reach them from overseas. There was a lot of time to worry. When the war finally ended, everyone was so happy. Eddie out in California with the Army was so excited that he went up to women he didn't even know and kissed them. 
Many American soldiers died in World War II, but the Aceras were very lucky. One by one, all six brothers returned from their time in the service. Mama Acera cried each time a boy walked in the door. By the summer of 1946, the family was ready to get back to baseball. They were all older, of course, and Poser's heart had grown weak, so now he coached the team. They joined the Long Branch City Twilight Baseball League and over the next six years won the league championship four times. Every Sunday, crowds filled the stands to watch the all-brother team play. As time passed, the Aceras got married and moved into their own homes. They worked hard at their jobs at the water company, at the post office, selling insurance. They started having children of their own. In 1952, they played their last game as a team, but they had already made history. The Acera brothers were the longest playing all-brother baseball team ever. In 1997, the Baseball Hall of Fame held a special ceremony to honor them. Only seven were still alive. Paul, Alfred, Bobby, Billy, Freddie, Eddie, and Bubby all made the long trip, along with more than 100 relatives, including their sister, Frances. Jimmy's son donated his father's uniform and glove, which were put on display right there in the same museum that honored Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, and Mickey Mantle. They treated us like we were kings, Freddie said. After such a thrilling day, you could picture them driving off into the sunset happily ever after, but their, breasts, their bus broke down. They could have sat on the curb, grumbling in the summer heat, but someone found a bat and a ball, and as three generations of Aceras waited for a new bus, they played ball. That ball soared from grandfather to granddaughter, from father to son, from brother to brother. The end.